Greetings. I am Takur. Welcome. It's nice to see you all today. I've come to give you an update on the meetings that we had at the end of February. I will not be taking any questions unless they pertain to the meetings that we had just recently because there is a lot of information that is coming from the, these particular meetings. First of all, it was a very long session and many of you I want to thank for being there and to speak to the different countries of the world. It is important that they hear other humans, their points of view, and what they would like to see happen. Believe it or not, these are very important to the swaying of the political powers to our favor, and we appreciate that. So thank you very much for your involvement in that. There were several of you that spoke and gave your opinions on different things and different ways to bring alien and human life together in a very appropriate and loving way. We are your neighbors, and one day we hope to be acting as such. At this point, we do interact with you, but not the way that we would like to. On saying that, I would like to let you know that there has been several different discussions about ways that you can come to the colonies that might be better, that might be more substantial, that might help you with your rememberings better. We did discuss the site to site, but of course, we knew that they were not going to approve of that yet. However, they are softening on their points with site to site. The reason for this is they know that it is in inevitable that, our, that we and you will be someday together. They are frightened at the prospect that we would come sooner because they are the ones in office now. They would not mind if we came after they left office. Because then their power and prestige would not be questioned. But if, they, if we would come now, it would bring them into question and their power and their prestige and their prosperity. And so they're saying, if you just wait a little while, then we can let you do this. But I see what is happening. Some of them are older. Some of the older ones are starting to relent a little because they won't be in power very much longer. And so it will be easier for them to say, yes, I support that. But the younger ones that are coming up also see what is happening. And they know that eventually they will have to find a way to bring us into your presence. So that is what they are working on now. They are softening in their opinions toward us. They realize that we are not going to invade. They realize that the ones that are invading, they are trying to take care of now. I am very happy that this is happening. It brings us much hope. We know that there will be a time when they will relax their position. However, in the meantime, we are still working on that and we appreciate them listening to us. Now, there are other things that we discussed with them. Medical. We have given them many cures, many things that they can help their people with, but they have not yet rolled that out to the human population. That is another part of greed and another part of prosperity. They do not want to give up the different prescription drugs that would be involved with these cures. You see that many people take drugs for 
glaucoma, cancer, AIDS, things of this nature, and they're very expensive. And they make a lot of money. So giving the cure out for these things would mean that they would have to change where they make their money or change how they make their money because we have given them cures for many of the things that they make money on. Now, some of your population has had cures for some of these things in the past. The cures that we have ruled out, rolled out to them, are actually even better and safer. So please write to your congressman or your parliament or your committees that are in charge to let them know that you know they have these benefits for you. I do not know if that will help, but at least they will know that you know. Another thing that we have been working on is diplomacy. The thing that comes between us sometimes is the language barrier. Some do not understand us as well because we have to interpret into so many languages. We have to bring the messages clearly into every different language that is provided or is assembled there. And many times there are ambiguous terms that they give to us, and ambiguous terms we give to them because of how things are translated. We have decided that there should be one universal language learned between all of them. We have come to the conclusion that English will be one, the galactic language will be one, and perhaps Spanish. We're not sure how this will work yet, but we are trying to bring things into a greater clarity. We are afraid that many of the terms and many of much of the information that we have given is not understood quite clearly enough, and that could be one of the problems that is causing them to hold back or be less trusting. We are now going to be more universal in our approach. This seems to be agreeable with them because there is much dispersion. Another point from the meetings that has come to us is that they realize that our weapon systems are greater than theirs. They've always known this, of course. But they want to know if we are going to use them at any time for at any reason. And we ask the same question of them, of course. If they are going to use their weapons against us at any time for any reason. A great discussion broke out about protection. They realized that not all species are friendly. They realized that we are. And they would wonder if we would protect them against other species. Now, this is a great debate because we are not to interfere with your basic life in general. We have done some work with your weather, seismic, things of this nature, but to be integrated with you on a personal level at this point, they do not want. However, they would not be opposed to us helping them with a war against other species. So this was a a great debate that we had and we have come to the conclusion that we must stay neutral if some other species attacks you we cannot be involved in that because that is not what we are here for we are here for to help you evolve we are here to bring you peace 
on our own terms. But we cannot start a war between ourselves and another species. That is not progress. Do you understand that? Yes. We, cannot, we cannot protect you in a way that they want us to. But yet, I do not see this happening. It would be foolish for another species to attack you at this time knowing that there are other species that would defend. Grukvik Nir will not be one of those that would help defend, but there are other species that would, and that would be their decision, and we would stay away from that. There are many other points to the Council that are very important. But I do not have all the time to tell you everything that was happening. I thought these were the main points of great discussions for you. Thoughts that you would be very interested in. Also, they are interested in helping those that are sick go to the colonies. But we have not worked out a way to send you here or bring you here that is amicable with both sides. But I believe that will be the first test of sight to sight. We'll be with those that need medical help and can only get it by being here and having operations done or some kind of procedure. We are dis we discussed that for many hours as well. Many of your people, many of your politicians, would like to have their ills taken care of, would like to be part of that program, but cannot do it without including the populace. We will not do it without including the populace. Thanks. We will not just do it for the politicians and not for anyone else. And that is where the problem is. They would choose to just have us help them and no one else. Or help them and their families and no one else. But we will not do it that way. So discussion moves forward. Are there any questions about this meeting? Yes, I have a question here from Crow. Yes. Um, hello, Takar. It's nice to speak with you again. Very nice, Krilak. Um, When it comes to these meetings, do you speak to the politicians or do you speak to the people that are controlling them? We speak to the politicians directly from different countries, the heads of different countries, and we bring humans along with us to speak to them as well. Many of you are very articulate and have great opinions on how things should be done. And so therefore we bring you as well. Some of you, about seven of you, spoke at this particular meeting at different times and when it was appropriate for your message to be brought forth. And they were very impressed by the fact that you knew us as well as you did. They were impressed that you understood the position of the different countries and why you do the things you do. So does that answer your question? Yes. Very well. Continue. Hello, take care. Who am I speaking to? This is Sarah. 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 And I just want to say thank you for all that you are doing and for all Gertner and any other beings that are helping out. They're doing to discuss this with our government on Earth. Um, I just had a question. Those who spoke, were they speaking holographically? Yes. When we bring humans to the meeting, all must be in holographic if they're on our side of the opinion. Mm -hmm. 
we cannot bring them physically if because we are not allowed to be there physically we must be there holographically and so there if we bring any representatives to the meeting they must come in astral or holographic form because this is how the rules are with your governments yes and um, the ones who were able to speak you said they were able to speak clearly to the different governments um, it, it's interesting because I would like to know how it was perceived from the other side because I like to understand the conversation from many different angles so, yes, there, there are many different angles to the conversation, and that is why it, the conversations go on for so long, is mm -hmm. there are so many different opinions from so many different angles, and therefore they are all addressed. Okay. And which are the countries who may be still uh, holding back, maybe? It is the larger countries, of course the ones that have the greatest to lose or the greatest right. gain. Those are the ones that cannot decide whether they should move forward or not. They sit, as you will, on the fence at times. They go back and forth and tell us one thing and then bring up something else. Many times contradictory conversations comes forth when there are three or more members of a country present. They may have several different opinions from a single country. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it is as it is. And we do address them as thoroughly as possible. Now, there was a question in the room. Do the political people also uh, appear in holographic form? No. We appear in holographic form to them. They are present on the earth, and they do not assume any kind of other form. We are the ones that have to uh, experience the holographic form for them because they do not want us on the earth. That is part of the rules. Are they using the computers to talk to each other or are they really there? They are really there in most cases. Some of them use monitors to speak to us if they cannot be there in present. Eighty percent of those that we speak to are present. The groups come and go. All is recorded by all different species and all different groups. Therefore, they all know where they stand and what has been spoken beforehand. There's a feed for all different kinds of information and your planet has much information about us through these different kinds of communications. They have recorded many hours of our times together. But during the meetings, yes, it is not uncommon for the president of a, of a company, country to leave and someone else step in in his place because they have other obligations course but yet everybody is aware of what is going on Where was the meeting physically? this is not to be announced they are they happen in different parts of the world usually in places that are not very populated and different countries on all seven continents we have met but not at this in the same place twice were these conversations part of the G20 event? I did not hear the question. Were these conversations between the humans and the aliens part of the G20 event, the G20 that just happened? I still did not hear it. G20 is an economic conference. She was wondering if you ah, that. no, this was not part of your economic conference. Economics were discussed. However, that was a different conference altogether. Okay, thank you. I have a question. If we can't remember visiting you in the holographic, have any techniques where you can like visit us in our minds while we can remember it um, other than channeling, have they been discussed? Those things have been discussed. Memories 
are not seemingly too important to your government, unless it's their memories. So, but they are willing to discuss many different ways of helping you remember more about positive learning experiences. Now, that being said, they have yet to define what that means. 20 hours at one meeting was spent on defining that one sentence. Can you understand why? Because some of them do not view you remembering as a positive thing for Earth. But many have come around to understand that if they remember the information and not the people that they met. It would be good. But one is connected to the other. Yeah. And we would deem that if you cannot remember the people, what good is the information if it just appears out of nowhere? So we are still discussing that. But they, like I said earlier, I am encouraged by the fact that they are willing to speak about it at great lengths. That is encouraging that they did not shut off the conversation at an hour or an hour and a half, but continued to discuss it for many hours from many different angles. So this is actually a positive action on the parts of the governments. They do like the fact that you have interesting and positive information. They would prefer that they were given it first and they understood it before you do. That is not likely to happen and we explained why. Because many of the times when government officials have visited the colonies they have brought weapons or something that was not tolerated by Gurkvik Nir along with them or ideas or implants or things of this nature that were not especially wanted or needed. If they could do so without all this protection, as they call it, then perhaps we could get a little farther with them on the colonies. But they are frightened to come alone. Any other questions? <clears throat> um, yes, I do here. Um, Sheer is next. Hey, Tiko, how are you? I am well, thank you. Uh, I just want to ask if there are any more meetings scheduled for two 2016. There are usually three meetings in one year, not always. Sometimes there is only two. So the next one is perceived to be in the late part or later part of July or August. I see. Okay, thank you. Hello, Takur. Hello. I have a question. Are, are there any politicians who are listening to our opinions? Are there yes. any that would be willing to listen to, like, human colony members' opinions about these things? Is there somebody that we can physically speak to about this kind of thing without bringing them any kind of weird thoughts? Well, that is why we brought them to the meetings. They would not speak to you individually, usually. They would, because that would mean you would have to let many people know that you were coming to speak to them, their secretaries, other people, and there would be many questions on why you were coming to speak to them personally and you are just a regular normal citizen. Of course they could make up many many excuses, however they do not want to risk that because they're being bugged as much as anyone else and this information could leak. Therefore, that is why we bring you, several of you, to the conferences with us, so that you may speak directly to them, give them a, your opinion, give them the information that is necessary 
so that they can know that humans are aware and have great ideas and great suggestions for how to handle certain situations. Now, not all are open to listening to the humans. I should say listening to their constituents or their peers or whatever you want to call them. But they do record it and listen later. They do not all have positive comments on what you have to say. But I see that there are less and less comments as time goes on. Well, could there be another uh, a forum created? Maybe if we had like a, a blog forum or something where we could input our ideas and then those ideas could be submitted to them electronically and then as long as they could get our information or get our point of view, whichever it is, and then they can decide to take whatever actions from there. Yes, we have already done that in the past. We have already brought your views and opinions electronically to them. Now, the only problem with that is that these opinions and views can be electronically created by anyone. They've, I would prefer that humans come and speak for themselves. They also say, oh, it is possible that they are brainwashed. However, we know that the humans that have spoken to your politicians made it very clear that they are very well informed and are not brainwashed. And they already, they as well know that this is true. But electronically enhanced or electronically passed on information is dubious. Okay, well maybe we can come to a point where we can do things physically and be accepted and at least be heard. And that is what we are w working toward and have much discussion with. This uh, last meeting was very, very long and that gives us great hope because they were willing to extend the meeting another 24 hours just to hear all the different opinions. So it was a very positive meeting in my opinion because they gave us much more time to present and to be honest and open and present information in a way that could be understand, understood properly by all sections of your planet. Okay, thank you, Takura. I would like to put out there that I would like to speak with anybody personally who would be willing to uh, to meet, and it can be done discreetly or through other other ways. There's ways to be discreet, absolutely. But I'd like to put that, that out. They have a differing between them. Some would accept it, and some would not. Therefore, the ruling is that it would not be done at this time. However, I know that people like Sheer and Nibby and yourself and a few others would like to speak to the governments directly. And there are others of you that would definitely like to do this. It is being considered. Okay, thank you, Takur. Uh, well, Carolina is uh, next. Hello, Takur. Hello, Carolyn. How are you? I'm okay, thank you. Uh, my question is, are the humans who are representing us in holographic form consciously aware of it and the ideas they're representing? And also, is there a way for us to contribute or help them in any way? Those that have been sent to the council, were some of them were notified ahead of time so they knew they were going to be going. They already had their... Uh, information prepared and no not all of them remembered being there but they will have some subcon subconscious awareness of it now there will be better and more understandable and appreciative ways of doing things in the future as we work with your countries and politicians things are getting a little easier to, for 
at least the people that are appearing at the conferences should be able to remember that they were there. Yes? Yeah, a question. Um, is this, I'm assuming, involving the inner earth ancient beings? The inner earth ancient beings are not part of your political ruling system on earth. However, some of them do appear and show up there. Many of them don't speak because they don't have an opinion on this, but they are curious about what is happening with the ascension and the alignment of humans with aliens. So many of the subterranean cultures do appear at the, co at the conference. They do always stay, but they are, it is a, the governments are aware that they are there. They do not know where they are from. They just see them as aliens as, long, as well as all the rest. Is there any way we can contribute to uh, these humans in any way? I did not hear the part, first part of the question. Yes, always. Please, when you talk to us or whenever you have times that you channel or speak to us directly in your thought processes or out loud, please give suggestions please give information so that we may know where you are coming from perhaps you are someone that should be able to or could or should speak at the next meeting thank you so much I love you I love you as well okay Krell did you have another question <laughs> Um, was the topic of holographic projections discussed at the meeting? Absolutely. We have realized that they had been, at this point we realize now, that uh, there is a chemical that comes from the insectoid people. It's part of their metabolic or metabolism that if put on a human being and absorbed into the skin would not allow holographic to attach when they're coming to the colonies. Now, we can work around that, but it is a great amount of people that want to come in the holographic. There is a chemical that would break that down and allow the holographic to be attached after a while. And we did work with those people that came to the conference with that particular uh, chemical. However, many of you have been given this chemical and so cannot come to the colonies without being treated first. So it was a sabotage on the insectoids part. That is all I will say about that because... It, there, there was much discussion about that at the meetings as well. There are some insectoids and reptilians that help different parts of your governments and societies. They are now starting to understand that these people, alien species, are not working for their better good and have discovered some things that they will deal with. That is all I will say. I do not want to say anything particularly negative because that is not really fair to other species that are working on Earth with your governments. Okay. Are there any questions with the people there with you, Takur? I do not know. Can we ask them, please? I, yes. I know you didn't want to talk more about this chemical, but is there an antidote available to humans, or is that something we would only be Yes, able to there is an antidote available to humans. However, the application of it is, has to be very, done very carefully. So that is why we only did the ones that were coming to the conference. We will 
work with others in the future. It's a time-consuming process because the insectoid element, we'll call it, soaks through into the bloodstream and causes the astral not to be able to form the light on the outside. So therefore, we must cleanse the bloodstream of these people that have this chemical within them. That is time-consuming from this distance. Is there anything we can do to protect ourselves from this chemical? Not at this point. It's already been done. Thank you. And you, don't know, you know not when it will happen because all it needs to do is rub a shoulder up against someone who has it. Mm. <clears throat> yes, it's very... It moves very quickly. Mm, very nice. Anyone else have any questions there? Can we ask? Yes. Is there another question? No, oh, not here. So I guess we're we are finished with talking about the meetings for today and we want to thank you so much for coming to tell us this information to Kerr. It's so wonderful to hear all the great news. Thank you. And I am appreciative to everyone who has input into this matter and those of you who have, who have spoken at the conferences. You know who you are for the most part. And different ones of you have spoken at different conferences. But this last one, seven different humans spoke at this conference, and that is the most that has had involvement up to this time. Usually it's only three or four. So we see that human interaction is increasing and is very important. Thank you. Have a wonderful day and normal stay. Normal stay. Thank you. I will leave you now. Yes.